welcome to this session of uh, Let Us Talk It Zipinar. We call it Zipinar. We try to put in as much as we can in the one hour that we um, ask to spend, uh, ask you to spend with us. But at the same time, we want uh, you to participate to make sure that if you have any questions on any topic or you wish to have any topic um, uh, which we have missed, if that can be one of the options, please do let us uh, know, uh, emailing us at letustalkit.com or you can uh, go and register your kids for Let Us Talk It youth webinars which is an ongoing thing from the last uh, the two years. And our Zipinars, they are, uh, we are doing this for the last three years. And uh, we cannot be grateful enough for all the speakers who join in. They give their time. And our only request for all the attendees, uh, if you can interact, make their and your time worthwhile, it would be a great um, energy together. So today's topic uh, will be the first topic. Unfortunately, our second speaker uh, had an emergency and may not be able to join. So we have the one topic which has not been this elaborately covered in any of our webinars before. And that topic is um, fashion entrepreneurship traits. It's very close to my heart, heart I would say, because, uh, you know, the fashion is something that I love. Um, and uh, I have tons and tons of questions for our speaker and hope you have also, because our speaker has said that, uh, you know, uh, we can uh, just um, have uh, anybody, any question, it she wanted it to be an interactive session. So uh, with that, we begin the session. And uh, if since we have the uh, a whole hour with us, so if anybody can join in to have more other topics to be covered under the uh, umbrella of fashion, then they are welcome to do that. So uh, do look fashionable. Is it a baffle or winning a battle? Know the tricks from Jigna Shah. And who is she? Let's uh, find it out. Because the list, the profile that she gave me, I was like, I cannot complete it in any time, like less than 15 minutes. So I'll just say that she is the founder and CEO of Rev, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, one of the top high-end celebrity designer clothing brand. And uh, she has been featured by most reputed Indian and international media. Um, I uh, did uh, check she has uh, a YouTube channel with uh, more than one lakh uh, viewers. And I'm pretty sure that she has, uh, she did her graduation for an, from NII, NIFT and she is a faculty there as well. And uh, lots more to her and definitely she has an impeccable taste of fashion, which we can see on the video right now. Absolute honor to have you, Jigna. Over to you. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Phil, and thanks. Let's talk uh, about it. Platform, that would be great uh, honor to be on this platform. Uh, though it's a little short notice for me to, to prepare for your great audience, but still, whatever we can share in, a, in this short span of time, I would love to do that. Yeah, so to begin with, yeah. yeah, so to begin with, I think it's all about, I would really enjoy sharing my knowledge and experience with everyone rather than just talking and you know, giving the uh, giving the knowledge of whatever career I have at 20 years. So I think I would welcome people who can ask me questions and can know more uh, from me. Yeah, so uh, uh, let's uh, see uh, how, because the ladies I know here, we are joined with uh, uh, some amazing ladies. I see uh, Sheetal, Srilata, Anjali, Hashruti, Shritija, uh, not demeaning uh, Ashok, but uh, you know, if you have any questions, please do ask and anything related to fashion or, uh, uh, you know, uh, style. But my first question to you, uh, Jigna, uh, I was just watching one of your uh, YouTube videos and you said that you love colors and uh, that made you, uh, you know, more into. So how would you define 
fashion and style and uh, what's the what are the basic differences and how do we enhance or feel confident i have seen like uh, many of us might we might like something somebody wearing but when we put on ourselves we might not uh, feel Uh, comfortable so h- what should we do to start if somebody has n- does knows nothing about fashion um, mm-hmm. in the sense what suits them what should they should they do to start or to begin with okay phil now to begin the session first of all i would like to say we've been hearing some proverbs about first impression if you know uh, maybe before this all uh, finishing schools and uh, grooming schools came into existence we've been hearing that first impression is the last impression and then no you never get a second chance to make your first impression then you've heard about uh, first good impression can make wonders all those proverbs were there i think before we we we, we were born so that means uh, the impression what does the word impression and uh, fashion correlated so that's exactly the first impression now how do you make your impression how do you leave your impression like it's always said it's always the first encounter that a face makes full impression then it's like poetry is the exquisite impression of exquisite impression so you heard about all these that uh, you always leave a permanent mark by your first impression okay so usually we feel that women they dress up i would like to know that what do you know about women they dress up for themselves or women they wear dresses to impress others i would like to answer from women women themselves what do they feel about uh, fashion or dressing up good clothes so uh, speaking as like for myself like it's it's my own point of view like i i feel like uh, most of the time it's like they they wanted to to impress uh, the people around them or hide their insecurities through the way they they clothe themselves yeah so a survey says 50% of the women would like to check out they would always enjoy enjoy check, checking out on other women what are they wearing what are the like you know the trends the other women are following so more than men it's a behavior and uh, it's not like one particular country or region's behavior it's all over the world when when they yeah. say 50% of the women would like to check out on things which other women are following or they are wearing or they are donning so that means to women dressing up or fashion it's not only to to feel confident so what you ask me about like to feel confident so fashion first thing is not not an idea for a woman to feel confident they want to make an impression they want to they want to look good in the eyes of others and this is why they go to a party or met gala event or a wedding or somewhere you know it's a whole battle because then it's not only the clothes along with the clothes the right hair right makeup right accessories right bag right shoes and whole lot of the whole lot of things which usually man would not bother so first thing uh is about women want to impress others now in this others whether female or male whom do they want to want to impress when you understand the psychology behind behind the fashion or they want to look fashionable or they want to leave an impression by looking fashionable it's all about impressing others and in that others if you have seen whether where do you feel female relies on female or male for their if they want to buy an attire do you feel a female would take an opinion of a female or a male what do you say from your experience all of you i would like everyone to join can you repeat the question one more time jigna please see any girl when when she goes out for shopping do you feel she relies more on a male's opinion or a female's opinion what do you feel would you like to take your girlfriend uh, along with uh, you for shopping or your your uh, your boyfriend or your female or your male friend my own opinion actually to be honest <laughs> okay so the research says uh, women don't rely on man's opinion much for the dressing 
they would like to take the girlfriends along for 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 you no know, some very particular occasion they want to buy clothes for do they have an option uh, to maintain uh, sanity at home they try or somewhere else they want to impress <laughs> impress the girlfriends or the wives uh, listen to the wives <laughs> that's what i have heard from many <laughs> I know, I know. But the thing is, that men are not very fashionable, or they don't keep like uh, track with the fashion trends and all. So that's the reason most of the females they don't they don't believe on the opinions of males, be it like husband, be it boyfriend, or be it uh, no the colleague or male friend. So the the buying pattern we are discussing. So when you go out to buy a cloth, you would you would like to take a female friend along because you rely on her more than a male. or maybe exceptionally few males who will be keeping a track on the fashion trends and all that okay so basically fashion is all about first of all i would say it's all about impressing others and that also not impressing males it's impressing females because female is in that in that zone of comp- competition with other females females are not in competition with males for dressing for looking good or you no know, looking the best so to me to to dress up for a particular occasion it's it's a battle for a woman i hope all of you agree nowadays it's it's all going to a battle or maybe preparing yourself for an occasion it's equally the same i hope you all agree absolutely. with me absolutely yeah, yeah yeah i agree yeah. i have i've been in many situations that like it's just a simple event but most of the females are like they 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 want to do like a catwalk for for what they uh what they wore for that uh event so it's it's more like that like men are just um can just go simple things they they it exactly. seems uh, yeah. bill john's uh, girlfriend is uh, troubling him a lot okay <laughs> <laughs> we understand we no, can easily escape we can easily escape saying like the females now prefer females company for shopping than males company and that's a survey so feel can escape now easily <laughs> you know like so, going to the mall shopping is it's kind of tiring you just want to go to like some massage area massage chair or just go to the uh, toy toy area <laughs> just, like going around yeah. everywhere is yeah so this is how do you feel I'm sorry. This is Sheetal. I just wanted to pitch in that I'm with Phil. I go to the mall ninety um, percent of the time for the Chinese massage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, anyways, about uh, uh, this thing. So, way in advance, a woman has to plan her look, and look doesn't complete only with good uh, good outfit. It's also with the right accessories, right shoes, right. no footwear makeup everything so you can understand it's as good as a battle when they have to uh, make their impression somewhere in a, in a big event okay they have to prepare way in advance now what do you feel what what feel said when somebody else is wearing or you follow the trend one hollywood star is wearing a long gown and you try to adopt the fashion and then you feel oh no you're not looking good in the in the in the trend what you following so what's the reason behind that i would like to ask all of you that sometimes it must have happened with you also that you try to follow the trends but you feel no you're not looking for as good as what you imagined about yourself in that dress so don't wear it <laughs> as soon as you feel i mean anything for me fashion is i have to be comfortable in it whatever wherever the trend is i don't care i have to feel comfortable and and to be honest with time it changes i feel too like if i'm mm-hmm. not very previously i was not very comfortable with you know certain type of dresses which i am comfortable now or mm-hmm. you know vice versa so it depends on the comfort level as well for me at least okay but most of the uh, women they don't follow that whether they are comfortable or not as i said <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they will follow true. the trend whether it's <laughs> yeah yeah agree like for, and for sometimes me. the trend is so new that it feels uncomfortable like to follow that trend maybe as more people are adopting you see that more and more and more and then you become comfortable 
just by seeing okay. other people do more and more okay one major reason behind that sometimes you feel somebody else is looking good and it's not looking as good as on you it's about your own individual structure or body type if you if you understand if you heard about it women have different body types so you must have heard about the common types like the pear structure ripple structure or maybe rectangle oval shape or round shape or some very common common structures you must have seen okay but apart from that also usually it is said in the fashion language there are 700 types of female bodies so how do you feel then when somebody is wearing it when she is got a different structure and when you wear it it doesn't look good on you so fashion is all about knowing your own type your own body type your own personality and and lot of factors go behind that and that is where a designer studies your your whole uh biology your your mood your event everything and then the design so do you all agree with me for that yeah well it's totally yeah. agreeable because i have like here in our like i'm from the philippines by the way so like most of the uh fashion trends is that like the the korean style some sort so they uh, most of the teenagers uh do that kind of stuff well sometimes your mind confuses you of your age so you think of maybe i could try one too and then you, when you look at the mirror it's then you understand your mind really confuses you you doesn't look like <laughs> the other so it, it doesn't fit you so that's totally agreeable like your structure really affects uh, what you're wearing yeah so the height when you see when the hollywood uh, star wears like in a in a met gala event and when someone tries to no fit into the same same garment or same looking garment they they don't look good because a lot of factors are added up to that look it's not only the garment as i said like it's it's every individual body is different when some women have just the lower belly some have heavy arms so if you see and if you understand your own body and you'll see what are the problematic areas or what are the flaws where you have to avoid so basically fashion is a camouflage <coughs> where you try to enhance olden times it was like more of working on your own body type say like you you got a, you got a good waistline you try to highlight on that rather than working more on the problematic area suppose you got a, a big hip line or you got big thighs so pale like the olden times women used to really work like hiding on that instead of that you work you you change the focus on 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 the point where it is your your strength so if you got a good waistline try to focus on that rather than hiding what what uh, quality you don't have that's all fashion is right now it's all about that and it's all about understanding your own body am i right girls absolutely so what would be your one solution to uh, like you know not everybody is so um, aware of their type and what looks good so what is your like one um, general that uh, advice or tip that they should go for uh, to feel confident okay i would say first of all keep trying with your own color palette some some good fits some good different uh, cuts on you silhouettes on you and then you'll reach yourself to a conclusion where you feel no oh, i look good in this particular tone i look <coughs> good in this cut suppose a simple example a particular tone of say salmon pink when you when you wear that color and you feel oh you looking today very fresh or someone will compliment you that today you looking very fresh so it's not you who who's who's looking fresh but it's a color which is reflecting on your skin is making you look fresh or making you look good because that color is working on you so you have to understand your own colors which colors are going on you which fits are going on you which silhouettes you look comfortable as well as you can carry it also very nicely because as i said you cannot blindly follow the trends because you're not comfortable or it's not made for you or your body type so i would say keep on trying like the way makeup if you say somebody someone overnight you cannot learn it but you keep on trying trying and then you'll understand one day or you go to a designer and take his or her advice what color palette what fits what what silhouettes you should wear but i think by and large you understand when you keep on trying and then you reach to a conclusion this colors 
suit you better than other colors and simple example okay a lady who is a very little reserved nature she is not a very uh, what do you call bubbly and very very uh, lively personality if she wears some very fresh colors like peaches and pinks and all she cannot carry it off because she is not wearing a smile on her face she is not very lively she cannot carry those those colors which are very very fresh and very very pastels so you understand that even it goes with the personality also and some women are really bubbly and very lively and very jovial to them making them wear ardi tones would not go it's a mismatch it's a complete mismatch so there are a lot of factors behind that so understand your personality understand your your type of your like your nature your height body a lot of factors are there absolutely great um, advice uh, just try and try and see and ask uh, your worst critic and the, the, you will get the answer <laughs> so um if uh, i mean I just uh, i have to leave that's why i just uh, uh, quickly asking the questions that i have in mind so you mm-hmm. did talk about entrepreneurship and in fashion right now like everybody wants to you know is already in the in that area or uh, most of them uh, definitely uh, or they want to be uh, part of the fashion industry so do you have mm-hmm. any um, uh, you know tips or advice or uh, how to get into it or how difficult it is uh, right now where fashion is like every other uh, uh, next door neighbor is a fashionista so how to overcome that uh, you know saturation um, and if you are an entrepreneur what to look out for and i think i am done with my question <laughs> and others can go next okay first of all passion for your own self it's altogether a different different field and when you want to take it up as a business or you want to work as a fashion entrepreneur then first of all you're working on two extreme ends passion is a is a field which which is more to do with creativity aesthetics your detailing your fine sense of designing and you know when a person is creative he or she is more not more into accounting or marketing or you know the hard hardcore aspects of business where to 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 go successful in life you need to really look into those aspects marketing branding communication about your about your Uh, garments or your clothing or your sense of creativity and those are the factors where you need to really put emphasis on and that's the uh, the story behind your success only fashion there are a lot of designers who have created best of the uh, collections but they have failed miserably in the market because they have not understood the the right time for launching right time right pricing right branding so to be a successful entrepreneur you need entrepreneur you have to be ahead of time as well as you have to walk with the time to follow the trends to understand the market and to go with it absolutely yeah um so uh, i mean this is uh, does anybody have any other question um on this Be- because we um have uh, another does anybody have any question first let me get this uh well it's okay. it's not on the line of the first uh, of the, the the recent question but like i would like to know if there is a positive or negative uh impact of fashion in a certain in a workplace let's say like a generic one okay uh, jigna before you answer that just wanted mm-hmm. to let all the audience know that we have uh, with us sheetal uh, nidimoru uh, who is uh, you know she uh, i i don't know she is an organic lady herself i guess always uh, eating the best uh, uh, natural organic thing so she is with us and uh, she uh, was kind enough to say that she can uh, put in uh, some information and um, you know a discussion sort of not even information about healthy eating and healthy lifestyle so we can quickly you know fashion and uh, food and b- being healthy i think everything um, uh, amalgamates nicely together uh, so if we can uh, transfer that to um uh, that uh, topic as well uh, as soon as jigna is done yes okay yeah okay we'll 
uh, yeah so jigna will be more than happy if you can stick around and uh, trust me she is a lady with knowledge i mean you ask her anything she has an answer for that uh, about f- uh, food about a lot of other stuff so uh, yeah know, you know, myself is into organic farming and all so i would love to connect with her and talk more about it because we've got our own organic line also rave organica and which is doing great so as i said like passion is not only the clothes it's all about looking good your skin good hair good and without that organic lifestyle you can't by and large like achieve it in the long run so of course that's a part and parcel of the game absolutely oh absolutely uh, uh, sheetal the field is yours <laughs> uh, uh, with jigna please carry on and i have to take my leave thank you everyone and um, i'll listen in uh, on youtube later bye thank you bye Thank you, Julian, and thank you, Jigna. That was really um, informative and reminded me of other things. But actually, how do I come on online? Like, how do I turn my video on? Oh, there you go. Video on. Hi, Shital. Great to see you. Hi. Yeah, nice to see you too and see everybody here. Um, actually, I have to take a spin on the fashion because I remember my auntie was from city in Hyderabad and she knew all the latest trends. And every time she visited me and I'm from Tirupati, it's a small town, temple town. And then I was studying my uh, engineering and she would say, uh, Papa, you know, you're putting oil in your hair and you have two braids, you have no fashion sense, you're taking oil, you know, full hair to school and you are at your prime, you should be having dry hair and all that stuff. And I remember it seems my mom told her, like, don't get her into all that stuff. She's completely into studies, let her focus. This is usually how, you know, the South India, the smaller um spaces were because if the girl focuses more on fashion then Mm. she does focus on studies so i'm happy to see that it's a beautiful balance now where the girl can be confident with fashion as well as stay true to her values and that's one place where i love to um explore is because to me fashion is something that's innate when you are confident when you are relaxed you're yourself. And my mom and my aunties, my masis, they raised me with this adage, handsome is what handsome does. So when you feel handsome, whatever you do is handsome. And um, so to me, the my, my fashion sense comes from, you know, the basic things that come from the earth. So if we can um, follow the trends that are inspiring, that are not like when you were saying that really good question, as to what makes something that looks good on a celebrity maybe not look good on us is because a lot of us in the in the pining for passion for for fashion to look good you know with the passionate uh, feeling we lose our authenticity we lose the fact that this is who i am this is what i like because if jennifer lopez something likes something then i need to like that too so I think it's when we lose track of ourselves, what our strengths are. It's almost like when we lose, when we don't have enough love for ourselves, we try to borrow that from others. She's confident walking in five inch heels. I should be too. So to me, I love that we can turn this around to young women, to um, you know teenagers that are confused and are trying to figure out how to fit in. They want to be accepted. They want to be acknowledged to say that um, the more and more I hear like you are good as you are, you're enough. And your fashion sense comes from being completely okay with who you are. And the most important thing for fashion, we know, we all know is mental health. So if we have that confidence inside us, you know, I can rock a man's shirt and feel and walk the ramp because in my head, it's good. And or I could, if I'm not there, then I could wear the most gorgeous sari, gorgeous um, um, whatever those things are called. I forgot the the gaga and all that stuff. And I could be like, oh my god, you know, I don't know. 
I could be something wrong. Oh, the hair strand is, you know, a bit off. So to me, fashion is completely a state of mind, just like happiness. And for a state of mind, it's it's easy for adults to say, you know, you just, just be confident and it's okay. But not really, because it comes from our habits. And one of the habits that I do is with sprouts. So when we start the morning, we all know that it's, like the, the time for affirmations, the time to build up our confidence, the time to build up the rest of the day, how the energy with which we infuse the rest of the day. So every little habit, the atomic habits matter in how, how fashionable we come across. So to me, to take it back to, you know, basic, these are actually um, called uh, broccoli sprouts. And this one is fenugreek methi. So uh, we all know the basic, the green gram and the Bengal gram. So um, I, yeah, this morning my kids were having, so these are the sprouts from Methi. Uh, this is where I would love for all of us to focus because India is uh, right now the number one in uh, diabetes and number one in high blood pressure. And I don't even have to talk about America. I've heard recently that the sickness factor in America is more than uh, three different com countries combined, which is like the United Kingdom, uh, France, and Germany. So why is that? What are we having for breakfast? White bread, processed stuff, cereals, um, and why are and these are actually other kinds of legumes, and these are the broccoli sprouts. They are different. They look similar. Um, and the schools don't teach us that and many times we just focus on just like with the fashion basics We just focus on carbs proteins fiber, but what about the micronutrients? What about the superfoods who are going to teach us this not the schools not the universities not uh, the social circles not the temples the organizations that we belong to in forever so who's going to guide our future leaders into the best potential possible because we need band-aids definitely if a you know little kid he, he even if you don't need a band-aid you put a cute little mickey mouse band-aid and he feels good because he knows you know it's good so to me fashion that we take from outside is just like that yes you know we need the lipstick we need the mascara we need the right color foundation but from inside out for us to shine it's what we do in the morning what we do with our dinners and how we use our plant food and another example this is something from our ancient wisdom you know we start our day with copper water very mm. very very simple stuff affects how we feel the mood and we all know the term retail therapy girls go off because they don't feel good and there's a credit card there's um, friends and then we go why why do we need retail therapy when we can do our own uh, like uh, Sadhguru says inner engineering we can do inner therapy so everything to me and and to our ancient wisdom and when you look at the positive psychology it all starts with how I feel how I can how can I help myself so even before we tell our kids um, like for example, if they if it's hard for them to eat sprouts, they could use this organic maple syrup, which is again coming directly from the plant source, which is very high in lots of good stuff, including high energy for them to start their day, and not use sugary cereals. So this is what I um, thrive on. And if you have any other questions or you want me to go more on different topics, how we can incorporate, I would love to talk. But first thing in the morning is about looking in the sky. Second thing would be to take a lot of water, at least one liter. And then, you know, make sure our breakfast is stuffed with raw. Whether it's just raw. Just lukewarm water, Sheetal, or just the normal water? So this one, it should never be hot. This is overnight water. And also, we're not supposed to drink this whole day. This is just in the morning, a nice big tall glass. But the one liter, it can add to the one liter. But the one liter I was talking about is definitely lukewarm water. And if you can take um, lemon water, or for some people it's apple cider vinegar, a little teaspoon, or it could be just plain water. And nothing should be of force. Like uh, initially, we can't just stomach one liter, one liter and a quarter. We cannot. 
So we need to build up on it because again, yoga is about non-violence with which we um, acclimate ourselves to good habits. So, so lemon and honey also you don't suggest? Honey lemon? Honey lemon is fine too. It's just that um, for people, uh, some people, if they're vegan, they don't take honey. And the fact that honey, we just require very little if we do. And if they're diabetic, you know, they have to consult their doctor about the sugar content. So it's more the lemon water that's more important. And yes, you can add a little bit of Himalayan salt or a little bit of honey to enhance that. But um, it, it's more the, it, that's actually a very little piece. So if it's there or not, it doesn't matter. It's more the lemon water because it's the liver. Liver is like the well, one of the smallest organs, but it processes thousands of um, metabolic stuff happening in the body. So that's why um, I, I read, I heard somewhere, which was really funny, like do what you want in your 20s and 30s, because by 40 and it's definitely by 50, your engine lights will be on. So when we see these good looking young people uh, guzzling coke, doing whatever they want, eating late nights, doing anything, what I tell my kids is um, backtrack and backtrack people who live like that or and see where they are now in their 50s or take people who are at 50s and look at their youth they all look good so it, nature is very kind when it's uh, babies and young kids and teenagers but it's after 20 and after 30 it's when how you have taken care of yourself comes out But why don't you suggest the copper water the whole day? It's only in the morning, you said. What's the reason behind that? Used, because it's infused with copper in it. And we need copper for many reasons. But we don't need to overdose on anything. We Our body needs. And um, we we need water. So which is three to four liters is what they say. And definitely water um, that's if possible. And if you want to, you know, have entertain yourself we can use herbal teas we can use hibiscus water we can use green tea we can mix green tea in the water so there's so many options we don't need to whole day drink green tea or whole day drink even uh, matcha tea so everything in balance and everything in proportion like i know sprouts is good but i don't need to do it whole day so that's one of the things that we can uh, keep an eye on ourselves because we love to we love to overindulge if something is good for us. For example, like the Bikram Yoga, um, it's I know it's off topic, but it's something similar. As in like we know in India how yoga is done. It's in a very serene twilight zone when the nature is calm and there's nothing hot about it. Anytime we do it, even in huts, it's cool and breeze. there's breeze. There's birds chirping. But in Bikram yoga, it's like 90 degrees or something. It's one and a half hours. You sweat because the West respects sweat. They want something to feel accomplished. They're like, I did it. You know, I killed myself in the gym today. But that's not healthy because it's our um, balance is what keeps us going long and for longevity, for mental health. It's more about the balance of everything. And it's okay to follow fashion. It's not okay to be defined by it. Very true. Totally agree on Vikram Yoga. <laughs> yeah, I agree yeah. with that too, Sheetal. Uh, Sheetal, uh, this is Ravi. Uh, any tips for uh, vitamin D? Because I think most of us don't have proper exposure to sun. Oh, vitamin D, right? That's actually uh, one of the crucial, crucial things, especially for us even in the west because of our melatonin melanin content in our skin the brown color um i did hear that vitamin d is a hormone it's not even a vitamin when that vitamin is low every other vitamin is not doing its job so definitely you know sun exposure because we are meant to be in the nature but we are living more and more from inside a box uh, we live in the box of a house, Go for us here, we go into the garage or straight into the vehicle and then it goes into the office or school and then inside another box, inside another grocery store box. So this boxed living is really affecting our 
absorption of vitamin D. So definitely, um, even though the regular recommendations are very low, like 1000 IU, and for kids, it's like 800 IU. You can't quote me on this because I'm not a medical doctor, but the what I follow, and I follow a lot of um, holistic um, people, holistic doctors, and they recommend higher doses. The usually in America, the lower recommendations are like if you're about 30 in your you know, vitamin D3 test, you're fine. But the optimal is actually above 50 and it's in 60 to 80 range. So there is um, something definitely that as we Indians, we need to um, um, look into our vitamin D numbers and then get it tested every three months, every six months. I know. It, Actually, here in America, the insurance stopped paying for that. They won't agree because they just said everybody here is low. That's it. So beat it. You want to take it, take it. So we can spend money in the, in the mall. Why can't we spend money uh, testing our own vitamin D3? So this is my approach to it that, yes, we should definitely be conscious of the numbers. And unfortunately, a lot of us look at... Um, uh, allopathic doctors, the regular medical doctors, as the go-to for everything. But if you look at the medical studies, the textbooks that they have to study to become a doctor, it has nothing to do about nutrition. It's all about diagnostics. It's how to cure, how to fix a problem, and we need them. We definitely need them. We're grateful for them. But it's nothing to do with prevention. It's nothing to do with they don't understand sprouts. They don't understand uh, why we need to sprout. In fact, they say eat nuts. But, but Ayurveda tells us nuts are dry. When we eat nuts by the handful and they're not soaked and they're not, um, uh, they're not prepped properly and in smaller quantities, it causes dryness in the body, which increases inflammation. So in Ayurveda, it's a disease is caused by dryness and health is caused by lubrication inside the body. So that's why they, if you go for Panchakarma, they put... Um, like a, a herbal treated uh, ghee into every every hole in your body because they believe in that lubrication. So when we go for low fat milk or low fat something, all these fats, just like fashion trends, if it doesn't work for us, for our body fit, if, if it doesn't, I remember the time when my auntie was saying, wear parallel pants, those are in. And she's very fashionable and, you know, she was like, I was like, no, I'm short, I'm 5'4", and they make me look even shorter, and I don't like it. It doesn't enhance, but I could see many people were following it, and they were, I don't think they were enhancing their beauty, wearing something like that. And But definitely, there were tall, tall, skinny ladies that, that rocked it. So, um, what's good on me may not be good on you, what's good on you may not be good on me, but just like that, with health information, if we go back to the basics, you know, the basic stuff looks good on everybody, the basic, basic. So that's my approach to health and definitely uh, being aware of our numbers, not just vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, um, what else, B12 for vegetarians and uh, ferritin and iron definitely for women. So all of these is very, very important and um, I am a seeker in the process of knowing more. So if you have, if, you, if any of you want to contribute, please do so great thank you Sheetal. um i have another question um this is more personal uh, so i have this challenge where you know if i have too many tasks to work on uh, i go sleepless so i cannot sleep properly mm -hmm. so any suggestions to have a good sleep a good day? um yeah, I think you're not, even though it's a personal question, Ravi, I think uh, you're in the majority <laughs> because everybody here relates to that. And a lot of people, other than the fact that if they are drunk or something, they cannot be peaceful at night because the thoughts rotate. And um, one of the things that, in fact, I was in a um, cab in Delhi once and this cab driver was taking me from one place to a gym. And I was just visiting my cousin and he was telling me that when I told him I just came from a yoga institute, I was there for three weeks. He asked me, can you help me like when I am waiting? And he said, I'm the first uh, uh, ride he was giving. 
and so he didn't know the whole day if he was going to make any money and it was not until one o'clock or three o'clock that he got the call from my cousin to take me and he was like i feel so nervous i feel so tense and whole day i'm just waiting in the cab waiting for someone to call me and if they don't call like i don't know like i'm thinking like what will i do if i don't make money i have to go home i have to do this and it's not like i can even take time and go to yoga institute to rejuvenate myself like what can i do and as we were driving to the place it's not like i could even look at him one on one and uh, give him some gyan or something so it was like he's working so i told him what i found out at the yoga institute is that yoga is not on the mat it's off the mat it's my mindset it's how i respond to every situation and one of the best things they gave me was that the the work with the breath so and um what they suggest was like there's so much happening and i can't go into the whole science and uh or even the philosophy of it but the quick technique was that when we do one of the pranayama which is called brahmari brahmari is something that vibrates our inside and our head where the brain is completely agitated and high functioning and overthinking so when we do brahmari for 20 minutes uh, um, or starting with 11 minutes but 20 minutes is really good it's not just at bedtime when we need sleep it's also when you're so stressed out you can't really go anywhere you can't like take nature walks or by the river or you know do whatever it is you're actually on the job i said you don't have a customer and you're just waiting so then you take a deep breath and you make the sound of a bee and you don't taper down when you take a deep breath and your lungs are filled the the sound has to come at the same level and then you stop when you're out of breath, you don't taper off like Om, we don't taper off. We can practice it now and we can do it like five times, but I want everybody's audio on because it's a very powerful vibration inside. And when we do this for 20 minutes, when we are stressed out, when we need sleep, they say, you know, this builds up the habit of you're basically numbing, vibrating and creating um, hormones that induce sleep. You know, the mel I'm always confused between melatonin and melanin, but the sleep inducing hormone, the calming one, it takes down the uh, what's the hyper one, the cortisol, adrenaline, it calms that. So a lot of us, I feel like it's the resurgence to go back to the ancient wisdom, whether it is Indian or whether it is any of your countries, actually has the key to our um, peaceful existence, to function at our optimal uh, performance in this lifetime. So if you want, we can uh, end this time, end this, end this session with the uh, five Brahmari. Should I show you first how to do it? Yeah, we can try actually in the middle of the day. That's a good break uh, to continue our work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there is a different ways of doing it. I'm giving you the basic, basic one because I didn't want to freak out the cab driver and he couldn't thank me enough. And we actually did it together all the way to the gym. And when I told my cousin, who is um, a CEO and a businessman, who travels all the countries he was like oh my god she told me what are you doing i said no this is what it is it's not like you need a class and someone to come in and then ask no this is what we do for each other as a you know um um a kutumbam a family of brothers sisters cousins everything like we are all there for each other and if someone asks if you know something share and if you know something you know you share back to me so we take a deep breath so if you saw i stopped i didn't go i didn't do that so there is a reason and um, the ideal way to do this is to close all your senses like close your ears close your eyes and in a way because you're going internal your thoughts are going external and they're constantly agitating you, but now you're sending the energy back to you. And uh, there is proof in science that when we have, when we close our eyes and focus on anything, whether it's our body part, whether it is a situation, the energy flows to it. That's why you know that Olympians, they, the people who are experimenting, they visualized winning, they didn't really practice and they still won. 
So there's a power when we focus our mind and especially when it goes inward, the power multiplies. So we do that and the other, the most authentic way of yogic way of doing is to touch with the tip of your tongue at the top palate. So the whole thing then when someone is next to you and they touch on top of your sahasara, they feel that hum. So you want to try up to you guys how you want to try it. I'm going to try the basics. So are you with me, Phil? Yes, I'm, I'm actually trying to. Okay. <laughs> Practice it in my own. All right, take a deep breath. vibration inside your brain inside your face in your chest thank you everyone for giving me this opportunity and thank you for good questions uh ravi and jigna Thank you, Shita. Oh. We would like to connect again with you. Thank you so much. Extremely well. Extremely uh, good session. Thank you. And, and for uh, those who... I, I'm sorry. I joined late. I don't know what time we have started. What time did you start? Yeah, there was a session uh, on fashion. I know the uh, uh, fashion uh, entrepreneurship traits uh, by uh, Jigna. Uh, which was, uh, you know, uh, so thank you, Jigna, for a wonderful session with very great thank insights. Great, great insights. And then uh, we have Sheetal, you know, you know, talking about, uh, you know, fashion, health and other aspects. <laughs> fashion from the inside out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sheetal, uh, one question. Uh, I don't know. Is that okay to ask? Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, sure. Yeah. I, you said do you well, every day do you do you do you have any spreadsheet uh, what you do uh, oh you mean for the habits yeah, habits like you said like you wake up in the morning and you see the sky and then uh, you, whatever you eat um, whatever you're practicing is, is there any like a spreadsheet or maybe is it is it possible to share because I think that is really you give, give a inspiration or maybe give a you know so that we don't forget and maybe we can follow some things and uh, yeah we can catch up. yes actually that's a very good um very good um question that i've been addressing it with my own family my brother and my auntie it's not like if i just give them something you know cheat sheet they're gonna okay do it so they've asked me a few months ago but i'm like <sighs> not giving them yet because mm -hmm. Because we all know when we just get the the key, we're like, okay, yeah, sure. You know, and I care a lot about my big brother and my auntie and I want them. So, yeah, I wasn't giving it right away because if I had that faith that people will just do it and you just give it. But um, whenever there's an occasion, I have been giving them here and here and there because it is overwhelming. Even if someone comes and says to me, like, do these 20 things from here on out and then uh, you're going to have even better life. Initially, I'll have a high. I'm like, yes, I got this. And honestly, how many of us, right, can follow through? But I think definitely I that's my goal is to build a community where we can build habits together because it's proven that if the one-on-one, -on -one, like I tell you today, and I'll check with you, I'll ask Rini and... Um, to catch up every week and every month and after six months do you really think there will be a change so what what research shows is that when we are together as a group and we raise each other that the power goes in the group connection 
just like in nature you know it's ecosystem it's a sustainable what is it called um ecology what is that word Shini? like where everybody's symbiosis uh, yeah, symbiosis, yeah. Symbiosis oh, and the synergies, all that stuff, like it's one plus one will not be two anymore. It will be, you know, 111. So when we do this together, habit building, they're also called atomic habits, yogic habits. So we we need this backed by science because we know there can be a lot of superstition. Like why only copper? Why can't it be glass? Like why should so we need studies to prove to our youth too to like not just take it for granted just because we said it. Who are we, right? So that's definitely something we can all. Um, I think we will do something like this in the future where we'll build each other up as a community, again and again and again. You know, we are social animals. We will not exist alone. We will not survive alone. It's the fashion industry will not survive. If the women decide in like even it seems even in four days, if women decide I am not going to dress for another woman, the fashion, the billions of dollars of fashion industry will collapse. It seems just four days. I remember listening to this. So we live off of each other. So definitely we can build, including like the sleep issues, uh, the, the lifestyle is the key. No matter how many times we go for Panchakarma to yoga ashram, if we can go for detox somewhere, we can buy chia seeds, doesn't matter. If our lifestyle is shot, if we have, you know, core habits that are bad, no Ayurveda, no medical doctor, you know, no Swami, no, nobody out there is going to save us. We have to pull ourselves from the hole and, um, but together we can do it. Exactly. I completely agree. The reason I'm asking, was asking, great explanation. I completely agree as a, as a, as a community, as a group we have to do. And no argument on that. Yeah. Just as a start starter, uh, you know, like a, Sometimes it motivates and uh, gives some, oh, okay, that, that's, all, that's the reason why I ask. Yes, yes, definitely. Like to start with, like I said, looking at the sky triggers, it seems the bedtime. So even for Ravi who asked you know, about the bedtime, our morning doesn't start there. Our morning starts here, 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 right? We're doing everything and driving. So it's rare for us to look at the sky. And we are meant to look at the sky. Our vision, our vision, our brain, our thinking expands. It seems when we see something so uh, vishalam, you know, like expansive, and the light stimulates, and the eyes are our extensions of our brain. So we have abused our eyes, we including me, because everything is on the phone, everything is on the screen. So our eyes are not meant to see an object like this all the time. We are meant to see all different distances. There's a tree here, a path there, you know, human beings over there. But when we are doing this all the time, it really affects our mental health because this is what our brain is not uh, geared for, but that's what we're doing. So for that, the eye exercises are important. Um, then definitely, you know, the first thing in the morning, oxygenation is important. The oxygen inside every single cell determine how energized we feel, how healthy we feel. And we are, our mornings are usually rushed. We're like coffee, doing something, 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 and we don't even take care of ourselves. For the detox, we don't drink enough water to hydrate because whole night the body is sleeping and the body is dehydrated. But the mornings are the 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 way we treat our bodies the worst when it, they need to be you know lifted up. So there are many things, and we have overall become a very degenerative society with de degenerative habits. If we say I oh, need to relax, it's um, late nights, it's uh, clubs, it's overeating, it's overindulgence, it's watching TV too much. This is our definition of. Uh, let me take care of myself. I deserve it. You know, I worked hard, so let me play hard. But are we or are we are taxing? So, yeah, it's not like there's a sheet that comes out and we're like, okay, from it. But it's a it's a root uh, system that needs to be elevated. And I think we're on it. So, Sheetal, I've reversed, my, Sheetal, I've reversed my blood pressure for which I used to take medicine, allopathy, two tablets a day for almost six to seven years. Living yeah. with all the pressure of business and all, and Ayurveda has that power. And maybe the lifestyle for eight years, my blood pressure is completely gone. While allopathy doctors, they say no uh, blood pressure and diabetes 
you have to lifelong take the medicines and all but i've experienced it's only purely through lifestyle i've reversed it that's so amazing to that's amazing and i think that's what that's the news that needs to spread because any time we say ayurveda yoga everybody's like okay checked out right because it's like comes with like a high funda it's un, it's not bite size it's not progressive worded and when they speak talking about charaka and patanjali we're like okay yeah it's not my my cup of tea but that's an that's amazing and congratulations jignya yeah i do yeah, panchakarma also every year i do one uh, panchakarma and then you have all those nasiyas and everything yeah. i do the whole process and you need to really grease your internal parts also as the, the food what we eat and all we are into organic farming as a passion yeah. it was because i had a farm but then i was so impressed by, by our ancient uh, what do you call the therapies and the lifestyle what was recommended and when my blood pressure shot up to like 200 plus to 20 wow. and i was hospitalized and doctor said life long you have to take this medicine and all that but i could reverse it only through the lifestyle so i recommend everyone this all small small things but that does matter it does that's matter. actually an incredible so, good story and uh, this is my uh, parting thing is that whenever i've been to yoga ashrams it's i see the westerners who are in their youth they don't have any health issues that are curious that are figuring out what's here you know whatever it, you call it new age or what they're there when i see indians they're already having a problem they the doctor said okay we can do it and you know you have to go to yoga and uh, our yoga ashram or they're already obese or already they're old i want to know why our youth is not there why are we not there why is there the the india that's proud of yoga is not there when everything is going good why are we approaching to them only i mean i'm glad we are at least approaching even after all of this but i feel it's the lack of um knowledge in delivered in the right way to the right community so can we expect a uh, once in a while classes or <laughs> sessions from you like <laughs> weekly or monthly yes we should uh, plan those uh, you know uh, mass inspiration now uh, Right, sessions right. especially people who are in michigan right so sheetal yeah. can do it probably in person also based on her schedules and her uh, interests and what she wants to do yeah yeah, yeah. that's my core cool calling i love it yeah, yeah. That, that 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 i like it and uh, but at least uh, uh, to zoom maybe we are open yeah you, right yeah we should do, do like a once a month uh, asking once a week is it too much yeah <laughs> so yeah and other person i forgot her name uh, she said uh, she uh, cured her uh, blood pressure maybe maybe she can take one session i don't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have lot lot more to share about the as what sheetal said about the lifestyle in ayurveda and one simple example we are like the community who were ancient from ancient time we were following uh, the last meal the uh, dinner before sunset and now what do you call it intermittent fasting 14 hours 16 hours but i remember my grannies i think some 50 years ago they used to follow it our last like meal is always sunset time we don't eat after sunset and then morning when we break fast it's almost 13 to 14 hours and believe me it really works it does wonders to your body 13 14 hours if you don't eat anything and yes. once in fasting also so all those things like really help me reversing all my uh, problems so what was written i think in ancient time that was somewhere it was a science yeah nobel one uh, one uh, japanese uh, uh, scientist got a couple of guys got a um, nobel prize yeah. hmm. I, i forgot For recently they discovered why fasting is important yeah yeah the every autophagy. every every fortnight like every 14 days every like ekadashi for example like mm. a, if you do like a one fasting um like every 15 days that like a 26 times uh per year so 52 weeks right so 26 times then uh you don't get any cancers uh, etc etc yes yes Rushi, yeah, we also know why the fasting it's not about any day any time it's about 
also the you know when the moon is and so when we can explain this properly to the community our youth then it's more palatable and it's definitely there should be why and we should be able to answer why and one more thing she tell what food we eat like most of the times if you see in like forget about the processed food you can't just help it because once in a way you have to eat or maybe whatever you get it's so much loaded with chemicals preservatives any food you take even vegetables fruits so i think by and large it's inculcated in our lifestyle that however whatever you do you can't escape it so i think that also plays a major role by and large what you saying like you growing your own sprouts and you doing your own things that's the best thing home home food home cooked food yes and these are part of the environmental toxins that go inside us hence we 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 are into detox every season at the start of is a change of every season and because we know that no matter how good we are we're still in living in a society with cars and everything so things will go in things will happen so uh, on top of it adding the load load of um bringing in junk into the house is like inviting poison it's like if i come in front of you and you're eating something and i i will say i'll put a drop of nail polish or a drop of some chemical will you will you let me you no know, right so why are we letting, letting the companies profit based companies do that why are, we need to read ingredients list we need to see if there's more than 5 then what is the sixth one why so when uh, we trust yes we should trust human beings but when we trust companies that are profit based and their their ingredients is such a big list and you just look at the bread and the kid wants that there's a photo on top there's some avengers or some mickey mouse we are being um, fooled by, and we are be acting like sheep you know that doesn't have any thinking so when i go to the doctor you know we ask questions when you go to a nutritionist we ask questions but when there's packaged food we need to ask questions like how does it relate to our ancient wisdom how does it uh, affect me if it can sit on the shelf for so long what is it going to do to me how pranic how much life is this food but unfortunately we also have to face that mainstream is fashionable you know the fashion chemicals are intense like when we look at anything you know we have to see what ingredients went in there but most of us are not we live we live in a more superfluous way so the color is enough and so um so it's important that you know we go into the source of why i am putting on this why i am eating this is it good Okay, hey, I think everyone is set. Um, well, I, I'm very much overwhelmed with all the knowledge I've got today from these wonderful ladies. Thank you so much for sharing uh, those experienced, uh, inclusive thoughts. So, yeah, and uh, for for Jigna, you can uh, message her on LinkedIn. Uh, she can definitely uh, uh, reply you through there. And for Shital, if you'd mind to uh, share where they can connect with you if they wish to. Um I guess uh, approach Shini for now. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you can you can uh, message through uh let us talk it website that's uh, let us talk it uh if you wish to uh, uh connect with uh Shita or uh so uh, our team can respond from there. All right. Well, I think that concludes everything. And also wanted to let everyone know that we also have our youth webinar. So if you can join and uh, register for uh, uh, the sessions, you can just visit our website, uh, letustalkit.com forward slash youth. That's another way of supporting them as well. All right. So, well, thank you so much. We can call it a day. And also we wanted to see you again uh, next uh, Wednesday, the same time for two new wonderful topics to discuss with. And today, it is really a wonderful session. Thank you so much, speakers, Thank for all the you. efforts. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank yeah. you and uh, from the team, we wish you all well and uh, have a good rest. Take care as, as always. Thank you. Thank you.